Yeah. Hello, folks, and thanks for tuning in to the Shagilola Salami Show. I'm your host, Shagilola Salami. If this is your first time listening to the show, the show is a virtual cafe with a group of book lovers chatting about indie books over virtual coffee. We talk about books by self-published authors, from fiction to non-fiction, romance to sci-fi, as well as industry news. As a listener, what can you get out of the show, you ask? Well, you get to discover previously unknown books by self-published authors, and hopefully you would like one of them at least to, get, um, to go and buy it. I have a one-year-old assistant, so you may hear her every now and then contributes to, this, uh, to the discussion. This is a family-friendly show, and you know little humans do read books today. Uh, do read books too, I can't even speak properly. Um, so if you would like your little human to be on the show, then please do get in touch. We would love to have him or her or them on the show. Today I have on the show with me two lovely ladies. Um, the first lady is by the name of Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Hello. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and tell our viewers, uh, listeners, what you do? Okay, um, I am a professional writer. I usually write about the 21st century slave trade. Okay. I have, I have um, published three books on this topic, and I'm pleased to say that they're doing very well. The flagship book in my trilogy reached number seven in all fiction on Amazon. It oh. has also won an award. Wow. The, the sequel is also a perennial bestseller. Uh, it has also won an award. And the third is also, um, it's always in the top five of its category on Amazon. Oh, okay. What's the book about? They're up, about the victims of the 21st century slave trade. Ah, right. Okay. Thanks. Um, and the other guest on the show is Brain. For a second, my brain cells just went went flat. I'm having mummy brain today. Hello, Rain. Hello. Yeah, hi. So do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm the author of three self-help uh, sexuality books and an online course, all on the subject of female ejaculation. My yeah. first book went to number one on Amazon and was also a hot new release. I've nice. been interviewed on Eminem Sirius XM channel, Radio Gorgeous in the UK, Ross X Radio, PPRN, and others. Um, I also write about Tantra and sacred sexuality for other uh, online sites, and I'm currently working on a line of Tantra-inspired erotica short stories. Oh, wow. That, that, sounds, that sounds really, really, really... <laughs> See, even my little human quite like, oh, that's quite exciting, even though I'm sure she doesn't know what all of that means. Um, and hopefully not for a long, 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 long time to come. Um, okay, well, you know, it's a virtual cafe. Um, today in London, it's quite gloomy, um, sort of dampens your mood because it's like now, but earlier on it was quite sunny but really cold. Um, now it's kind of like the sun's hiding. Um, what's the time there actually? Um, here in Tampa, it's um, 20 past 11 in the morning. Okay. Uh, what's the weather like? Um, it's 62 degrees, uh, which is like 16 Celsius, okay. and it's bright and bright and and sunny. Nice, nice. This is, and one, this is well. one of the yeah. This is one of the coldest days we've had all year. By the way, we we hardly have winter here in Florida. Oh, I'm so envious. I am green. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm looking out at palm trees and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, here it's 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 frequently rainy or cold or well, I'm not gonna say miserable. I like London, so it's fine. We'll we'll endure our not so sunny weather all the time. Summer's coming. Uh, okay, du -du 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 -du. right. So we're just going to get on. So we're doing virtual cafe, you know, with our nice virtual. Coffee. I think everyone knows by now that my favorite drink is you know a nice hot chocolate, you know, extra chocolatey. 
extra milky hot chocolate and my little human she likes to have um, there's a cafe next to us and they do something you know that little humans do enjoy and it's called a baby chino and it's literally just frothy milk um, but it makes them feel quite grown up that they're having um, adult drinks <laughs> so what are you of having course. this morning I'm just having water <laughs> but I love I'm a tea drinker I love my tea oh. And I had a big glass of, of Florida pink grapefruit juice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Well, a few years ago, all you ever heard of in relation to books was paperbacks and hardbacks. And now there's an assortment of book formats from ebooks to audiobooks. Um, a new term I recently discovered was trade paperback. <laughs> Um, Nancy, what's your take on this? Actually, first of all, what are the different types of paperbacks? Do you know? I mean, why should one choose one over the other, or does it not matter? Well, I'm not really an expert on different types of paperbacks. Um, mm -hmm. Most of my books have done very well in the mm -hmm. e format. Um, yes. I, I'm selling a whole lot more electronic books than I am hard copy. And um, uh, that's fine. That's fine by me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that's that's quite interesting. And how about you, um, Rain? Um, can you provide more insights into the different types of book formats there are these days? I mean, what are the pros and cons of each of them? Well, I think that people primarily are selling the ebook or the print. I mean, yeah. that's primarily what I sell. Um, I know more people are starting to do audiobooks as well, but that yeah. of course takes a little bit more. You know, you have to have more resources to be able to mm. create an audiobook. Uh, mm. So I don't think as many people are doing that at, yet. But I I sell both ebook and print, and both do equally as well. And maybe it's because of the format of my books. Uh, people sometimes do want the print format. Yeah, um, but I, the the ebook I actually um, you know work with authors and marketing and the ebook market is just it's huge. So it's it's growing over the print market for sure. Yeah. Okay. No. Thanks for that, um, Nancy. What one What one tip would you give? Um, you know, an e a newbie author with regards to the format his book um, is made available in. Would you say to just focus on ebooks, or would you say to do you know try and go through as many formats as possible? Um, I would start out with an ebook because it's so easy and it it involves almost no. No upfront costs. Yeah. Um, um, the the format I think is not quite as important as having an excellent product. Um, no matter what format you use, if you have an amateurish project, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And so you need to you need to spend a lot of time and attention to make sure that that the book that you want to produce in any format is the best that it can possibly be. Of course, of course, of course. Okay. Uh, that's that's quite good to know. Um, because you know, like I, I recently came across a guy, you know, who was legally blind. I mean, you know, there are lots of resources, you know, that allows him to use um, a computer. Um, but then one of the things he said, you know, is that you know he finds that you know he's quite limited by the books that he can read. So whilst he's quite interested in reading books, he can only um, read books that have been made available as audio books. Um, so Nancy, do you think that um, a lot of people are missing out on potential um, readers if they don't make their books available in, um, you know, say audio books, for instance, um, or do you think that, you know, just, you know, trying to get, especially, you know, the on Amazon, you know, there are millions and millions of books there, um, yes. and so trying to get your head and trying to stand out, you know, amongst everything, you know, is quite difficult um, on its own. So do you think if you put if someone made their book available as an audiobook, for instance, that gives that person a little bit of an edge over their competitors who haven't done so? Of course it would, but it costs thousands of dollars to produce an audiobook, and not everybody has those resources um, instantly available. Or you can do a com 
completely amateurish job yourself and and turn your uh, listeners off in the first five pages. Um, mm. It's it's a very very expensive option. Um, like like print. I mean print. Uh, you have to convince <clears throat> um, a publisher that to take a chance on you. Yeah. And th very few of them these days are are willing to um, to take a chance on an unknown writer. Yeah. Um, I I sent my manuscript to to 18 different publishers and was turned down 18 times. Wow. Uh, I, fi <clears throat> I finally ended up self-publishing it, and within five weeks it was number one in its category on Amazon. But nobody would take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, um, audio is a great way to go, but it, it, takes, it takes a lot of money to be able to go that route. Hmm, that's that's quite interesting because I didn't realize it was that um, expensive. Uh, Rain, what do you think about Amazon's um, audio book? I think it's called Audible. Um, you know where they sort of create, um, help you create, you know, um, convert your books into audio books. You know, I've not used it yet, um, so I don't have much of an opinion on it. Mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, you know, I've gotten so used. I've published several books now. I've actually yes. published four total, and so I've gotten so used to the uh, KDP and Create Space format, yes. and I've I've got a great system, so it's really yes. easy for me to get a book up very quickly. Yeah. Um, to go that that's like another thing I've ha I'd have to learn. Yeah. Um, but if it's if it's easy, then I think people should be using it. I mean, if it if you can create an audio book that easily, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, okay, well, thank you for that. Um, okay, so now that we've got the serious book, um, serious stuff out of the way, um, the, we're gonna review a nice little book. So I would let Rain tell us the name of the book because I think if I sort of do everything, it's kind of like I'm always advertising. So Rain, please tell us the name of the book that um, we've read that we're going to talk about today. Sure. The name is Big Giant by Chad Mee. Okay, um, so when you were reading it, um, okay, I should put the spoiler alert first. So if, um, if any of the listeners don't want to hear um, about this book, um, then please, you know, you can fast forward now um, because we're going to sort of give it a nice review. Um, so when you were reading it, Rain, what did you feel about the book? Like, did the author deliver for you? Okay, so um, I'm, first of all, I'm really disappointed that. She, that uh, <laughs> he's not here today yeah. um, with us because um, we both have been interviewed on Eminem's Sirius XM show, so we share that in common. Um, okay. And and I listened to one of his other interviews, and he is not a fan of ancient aliens, which is what you know his book is about, <laughs> yeah. alien life and alien experience. And I actually love that show, so I wanted to talk to him about that. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> um, I just think it would have been really interesting, and I apologize. It, the name of the book is Giant Rock, actually. I, for some reason, I think I said that wrong. Um, <laughs> Fly. But uh, yeah, and, and also I want to be an extra in this, in this film that's coming out. That's <laughs> there's actually a film coming out that's about yes. this book as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, so my disappoint. I first want to say I'm disappointed he's not here. But okay. what I. The book is actually science fiction and true. Um, yeah. You know, the author has a, a very famous uncle that in the 50s dealt with aliens, supposedly was abducted, and, yeah. you know, he has a very interesting story behind it. Um, but yeah. the actual book he wrote is, is parts of that story and parts of he was actually um, abducted himself as a child. Oh, wow. And, and so... He bases the book on all those things that happen as well as mixing in science fiction. Hmm. And so what my disappointment is why didn't he make it all true? Because there's so many things he could talk about about his experience being abducted, what what it was like to grow up with his uncle, and there's just so much there. And it sounds like the movie is going to be based on all truth and not have the science fiction added in. But um, okay, yeah, I just wish that. And I, and you couldn't differentiate what was real and what was based on truth from my perspective because I didn't have enough knowledge to do that. So it's hard to you know know exactly 
you know, yeah. what, what is the truth and what isn't. Yeah, yeah. But if you had so seen this book, say, on Amazon or Goodreads, um, was that something that you would recommend? Um, for someone who's interested in that genre, for sure, just because of the story that's there, and I think that it's a fascinating topic. And when I, w I went into reading this, uh, not looking for you know, how the story was played out or any of that. I was looking for the actual story. Like, mm. I think that that's the first thing in writing is focus on the story. If you have a good story, that's the most important part. And then you focus on, you know, how do I write that well? How do I, you know, make sure I have right grammar, whatever. So yeah. that's what my focus when I was reading it was the story. And so I think that someone really interested in that genre would be fascinated by a lot of what's in this book. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. And how about you, um, Nancy? When you read the book, um, how do you, how else do you think the book could have played out? Like, you know, what could have been different? Well, um, it's not really a genre that I read as a, as a rule, so I had kind of a hard time getting into it. Um, yeah. uh, I I thought the story was was good, but unfortunately. I'm a professional editor and I kept finding grammatical and punctuation and word usage errors that kept throwing me out of the story and and you know turned me into editor mode rather than reader mode. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I I found these errors to be very um, intrusive. So I'm I'm afraid I didn't enjoy the book as much as I I thought I might. Um, I never even completely finished it uh, <laughs> because these things kept kept getting in the way. And I, by the way, I went on Amazon and looked for the book. Yeah. It was released last July, and it still only has three reviews. Oh wow. Uh, yes, they're all five star reviews, um, probably planted there by friends of his. Uh, I think it deserves a, a more a, a wider readership, and for the most part, it actually reads quite well. I saw that that he had had an editor, and the editor's hand does show in in how smoothly it reads. But yeah. there needed to be a couple more passes before it was released to the general public. Mm, 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 I I feel you. Okay, so um, but apart from those. Sort of editorial um, issues with it. I mean, the storyline itself is it something that you feel if you met someone who was into that genre, you would recommend? Um, yeah, um, with those provisos, yes. I mean, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the story. It was like I say, it's not a genre that I normally read, but I I enjoyed it. Okay. Okay, no, that's that's good. Um, I'm sure that you know Chad unfortunately couldn't make it um, today. He was scheduled to be on the show, but um, due to circumstances beyond his control, he was unable to uh, make it. But I'm sure after the show, he will listen to the um, comments and hopefully he might take that on board for his next um, book. Because I find that when the next I next edition, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because I find that when I receive feedback, be it good or be it not so good, um, I feel that it helps me be better um, in what I do, uh, which is being an author. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that he will take those feedback um, on board. Okay. Well, my my version. Yes, well, just a second. I offer it. I offer it as one author to another. I don't mean it to be a, a criticism, but just a way that that he can improve his sales and reach a wider audience. Most yeah. of us as authors try to reach a wide audience. If we write only for our own enjoyment, um, there's no point in putting it on on Amazon. So yeah. I suspect that he would like to reach a wider audience, and it's in that spirit that I offer these ideas. Yes, of course, of course. Um, I mean, even if we write for only our own enjoyment, sometimes, you know, when someone else sees it and gives, you know, um, an opinion on how to make it better, as long as it's constructive, because you know there's sometimes when some people just go, oh, it's bad, I don't like it, but then you're not telling the person why it's bad, um, so as, you know, you've sort of said, okay, there are editorial issues and stuff like that, and I also find things like that quite um, annoying myself, so I'm sure, um, you know, he 
I'm hoping that he wouldn't take offense and he would look at it as being um, constructive. I mean, that's the whole reason why he wanted us to review his book um, on the show. Um, Certainly. Okay. okay um, well, be that as it may, um, have you guys read any indie books in the last year? Um, if so, what was the best one for you? Um, let's go with you, Rain. Sure. Well, I actually see a lot of indie stuff. As I mentioned, I work with authors and marketing those authors. And so in the last couple of years, I started doing that. Um, and there's a lot of indie stuff that actually comes through me. But okay. I don't read a whole lot of it just because I have a lot of other stuff on my reading list. Yeah. It's been there for a while, so I haven't made it yeah. um, to those things. But I did check out a book not too long ago um, because it was so unique and written about something not many people talk about and I think that niche marketing can be really important yeah. um, you know there's so so many vampire love stories yeah <laughs> and you know whatever is trending in cinema and in books yeah uh, the one I started reading which I'm still working on reading is a book about science and spirituality okay. and using other areas of our consciousness to discover both um, it talks a lot about some kind of unconventional stuff like working with shamans and you know it talks about even UFOs and ancient monuments and things like that but it's a very intense and it just you know it's mind opening to think about all these concepts that you know you may not because you're just trained to think one way yeah um, and maybe Chad should check out that book since <laughs> that would be up for Valley <laughs> if he's listening yeah Oh, okay. No, that that sounds good. And how about you, Nancy? Um, have you read any indie books in the last year? Yes. Um, well, as you know, I I edit novels um, as well as write them, and I recently edited a a novel that is absolutely wonderful. Um, mm. It's not out quite yet, but it will be. It's called Standoff. It's called what? Sorry. Uh, Standoff. Okay. It's a comical novel about how the Cold World, the Cold War, actually ended, and it is absolutely side-splitting. Oh wow! Okay, okay. So why, um, so why, when you say side-splitting, was like, was it like more jokey, jokey, or like, how would you describe it? It was a a, a, a farce. Okay. Yes, uh, but lots and lots of fun to read, and and characters that just jumped off the page, and um, it it was it's it's an excellent excellent product. Oh, cool, cool. Um, and has it been listed um as available on pre-order on Amazon or? Not, Not quite, uh, but it but it but it will be. And while we're talking about indie books, I would like to point out an e-book club that is especially created for authors of indie books. Okay. It's called Novels, Novel Tunity. How do you spell that? N-O-V-E-L-T-U-N-I-T-Y. Oh, uh, my brain falls first. <laughs> and um, every month, um, the, the, read, the members of this of this e-book club vote yeah. on their favorite book. Okay. And it's it's a it's a wonderful venue for unknown writers to kind of get a leg up and and start to get their material known. Okay. Okay. Please spell it again because when you were saying it, like my brain cells, so good. it was like so many. Okay. <laughs> right. Novel tunity. It's like opportunity only. Author ah. is is replaced by novel. Yeah. So it's N-O-V-E-L-T-U-N-I-T-Y. Ah, okay. I get it. I get it now. Even my little human, she she thought it was a bit of a brain twister. <laughs> but yeah. we got, so, and is that noveltunity.com? Or dot yes, com? yes. Okay, okay, that, that's fine, I'm sure. Um, and do they have a lot of readers on there as well, or is it just the authors? Yes. Oh no, it, it, they have a lot of they have a lot of readers there, and the previous winners of their um, of you know the favorite book of the month um, are actually on their website. Uh, so that's a that's a great place if somebody's interested in in um, in reading some really good indie books. 
that's a, yeah. a very good place to start, and it's a very yeah. nominal membership fee. Yeah. I think something like fifteen dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, are you on Goodreads? Because I was just going to ask that if you were on Goodreads, how does it compare to Goodreads? Because I know there are some um, groups on Goodreads that do similar things, and and I say Goodreads just because I'm on Goodreads as well. I'm on Goodreads, but I have not um, um, explored it to its maximum extent. I have on my to-do list, um, yeah. and I bought a book about about. Um, Goodreads for authors, but I yeah. haven't yet put everything into action. I that is a, a project in process for me. Okay. Well, I guess it's quite you know enlightening, you know, because again, everyone uses different thing, and you know, if you hadn't said it, I probably would have no. All the research that I've done, you know, with regards to marketing for indie authors, um, I've not actually come across that one. So it's quite. Um, thanks for the recommendation. Um, I will I will give it a check out. Um, and if you're listening to the show, um, if you're a book reader, you're a book lover, you're an author, please do go give um, NovelTunity.com a check out. Um, and hopefully you can vote for one of your um, one of the indie authors' um, books. Okay, that's perfect. Well, for me, I'm I'm reading one book. Um, it's called um, Immortal and Immortal Peace. And it's by Tyler Harris, I think, Tyler Harrison. Um, I've not got it in front of me. Um, and it's actually a UFO type book. Um, the author is on Goodreads as well. Um, and the book basically, um, the book, how far I've gotten, it's basically, you know, aliens made contact with humans. And it wasn't the type of, you know, Will Smith type one that, you know, guns are blazing and someone's trying to save the world. Um, basically, they've come and they come with quote unquote a white flag saying, Oh, we just need some of your gasoline, um, you know, so that we can go back to our own world. Um, and in in exchange for your gasoline we'll give you this uh, medicine that will make humans to not need sleep, not need food, you know, can do and have so much more energy. Um, and you know, it seems like an interesting read so far. I know, right? Can you imagine not having to experience the delicacy of a nice chicken. Please, I am happy to die if I can have my chicken. Or, you know, can you imagine not eating anymore? It's like, yeah, I don't think you eat just for nutrition. You eat so that you can enjoy it as well. So, yes, in this book, the aliens are trying to say to humans, you don't need to eat anymore. You don't need to sleep and all of that. But I, <laughs> Um, I've not I've not finished it yet, so we'll see how that pans out. And my little human being, um, this time around, I have to I have to name and shame this author because he's the bane of my life. The book she's reading is called Snow Snail, and it's by well, oh wait 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 she's dragging her book. It's by Mary Murphy. And why I say I have to name and shame this author is because it's literally I my cute little human takes my finger and then has me go slowly and literally that's all we do every single page because literally says oh here's the snail and she's sliding slowly <laughs> over slowly in and out of the brick and over the boot and into uh, over the flower and literally that's all we do every single time and now she's taking my finger and we're doing that exact same thing so I have to go slowly tracing the sl path of the snail. So that's the book she's reading, or I'm reading for her, or she's taking my <laughs> finger, and you know, we're doing so it's like slowly, and I have to go with that and go slowly in and out of the brick, and she turns the pages, and then she now goes, finally in time for dinner. So yes, Mary Murphy, <laughs> that's what you want me to do. I have to do that every single night. Slowly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's that's the book that we've we've been reading. Um, okay, so <laughs> you ladies want to remind everyone about your books, um, just so that because I I forget stuff, and I can imagine if they're listening to it, they'll probably be like, oh yes, what did the author say before? You know, so save them having to click rewind. You know, please remind them again. So if you tell us Nancy, and then Rain, you can tell us again. Okay. Sure. Well, um, just uh, yeah, go to authorrlee.com, and you can find all my books there. Okay. And Nancy? Um, NancyHartwell.com. 
I, I have my three books available there. And there's also, I also offer a free five-part course about modern-day slavery. Um, you just click on the e-course tab on my website, and we'll send you a, a, a piece of it every day. Okay. So why would anyone want to take the course? What is the benefit of the course? Well, I'm trying to help protect our children against these uh, really horrible predators. They don't care that they're destroying people's lives. They're just trying to make some money. Yeah. And um, there there's, seems to be a bottomless market for pretty girls and children. And um, um, the, the more that we know about how the traffickers operate and the kinds of ruses that they employ, the yeah. better that we can protect our children. Yes, yes. You know what? I think every every parent needs to know this. And so, if you're a parent, or if you know someone who's a parent, please go and get you know Nancy's course. It's highly important. You know, the funny thing is, the other day my friend and I were going out and we were having that exact same conversation, and it's like really, really scary. So yes, you know, I I will I will get, check your course out uh, again. And, and I say to my authors that come on the show, once the video is on YouTube, please go and put all your links in there so that when anyone views it on YouTube, they can see all the info. So if you put your website address, the direct link to your courses. And if you tag me on YouTube, um, on Twitter, then I can also share it with my followers as well. Um, because I get I have people who also do retweet me, so that would be perfect. Um, and I think everybody what? likes free courses, and I think that's a really useful <laughs> one. Um, okay, well, I think that sort of covers it for today. Um, but oh, actually, just uh, going to one more thing before I forget. Following on from our discussion earlier on about um, book um, formats, and I think we've covered this already, um, but it might sound really obvious, um, but a lot of people don't do things. And what I'm trying to say is that you know, there's this saying that says, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So it is important that you do your research. Now, any author can tell you that writing your book is the easiest thing you can do um, you know, in this journey of, to publishing or being an author. Um, so my tip to you is that you need to first of all establish who your target audience is and how suitable each format would be um, to them. So for example, what I mean is if you write children's book, who would do the reading? Is it the child or the adult? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, now my little human, you know, I've got this paperback that is saliva prone because you know the edges have all been sort of shizzled with you know with teeth and saliva. <laughs> but it's that is you know it's it's withstood the test of time. You know, so you need to think about you know the format that you want to make your um your book um available in. And you know, with technology increasing the way that it is, you know, there are a lot of e-readers that actually show color. And illustrations very well. So you know you ha you need to then think. Okay, do I want it to be available only as an e-reader, or do I want it to be available as a you know as a physical book? Um, also, you know, if you're targeting, you know, if you're writing nonfiction, that you're targeting people who are visually impaired. Do you want to then? I mean, I didn't realize how expensive it was, but then I will be honest. I haven't actually checked out. You know, the I think it's called ACX by Amazon. Uh, but you need to go to an Amazon website and check it out. You know, I used to assume that you know because it was an Amazon company that the way it would work would be the same way as Amazon's Create Space, where there were no upfront co um, costs. And I thought that uh, you know when you did it, that you would then be paid, you would you would be a royalty share where you get a percentage. But obviously, I I've, I've not checked it out, so maybe you want to give that a check uh, as well. So that way, you're opening up you know more avenues. Um, to yourself. You don't have to do every single one of them immediately, but it's just stuff you can consider for your, you know, for the future. Like maybe you release an ebook format first, and then you know, depending on how your marketing and the success has, of that has done, you can then say, okay, well, I can take it to the next step and release, you know, a paperback. And then you know, after that's been doing well, you can say, well, you know, it's been doing really well. I can then introduce an e, uh, you know, an audio book. You know, it's just stuff to consider. Um, just to make sure that you're not eliminating any potential um, customer or reader, if, if that makes sense. Um, uh, if you would like more info, you know, please feel free to get in touch with any of the guests on the show. Uh, Nancy, you know, she said, you know, she's also an editor, so I'm sure, you know, she'll be happy 
Well, I'm, 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 I say I'm sure you'll be happy. I'm, well, I'm hoping you will be happy for anyone to contact you to get you know advice or tips or anything um, that you you have to offer. Is that all right? Uh, yes, and in fact, I have a small kind of annotated checklist mm. that a, a potential novelist should look at. It's available on Amazon for $5, mm. uh, how to edit your novel yourself. Okay. Um, it's not a grammatical treatise, but it's, it's a list of items that, that many people forget to check before they let their precious manuscript out into the world and um, yeah. they, they might want to have a look at that. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you put the link um, you know, on, as a comment when you're updating all your info and if you send that to me on Twitter then I can help you share it so anyone who then comes right. to my Twitter handle they can, they can see that um, as well. So I hope you know, we've given you loads of useful info and how about you Nan um, Rain, do you have any other thing that you would like to share, any offers? Um, I think that <clears throat> you should. Uh, something I wanted to uh, recommend earlier was that when it, if you do an ebook on Amazon, it is very easy to do the print version, and yeah. you know basically it, they work together. So don't worry about if you're going to use Amazon as your format. Don't worry about just doing one or the other because you know I get equal sales on both, and it, it really helps you to have it in both formats because some people do still prefer print. Yes, yes. Okay, no, that's that's perfect. Um, well, if it all sounds, you know, complicated, you know, like we said before, feel free to contact any of the authors. Um, or if you'd like, you can contact me, uh, you know, for a one-to-one -one consultation just to go through the minefield that is self-publishing because, you know, it's quite, it can be a bit intimidating if you don't know where you're starting up, even though there is quite a lot of useful information um, available on the net. Well, that's it for today. Um, if you would like to be in the audience for my next show, or if you would like to bring your little human to the ne uh, next show, or you want us to know what your little human is reading, then please, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel because that way you get notified um, of episodes that I'm recording. Um, if you would like to sponsor the show, thank you very much. Please do get in touch. Um, thank you, ladies, for sparing the time to come on the show. Thanks so much. We thank appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, and to our listeners, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you like the show, please spread the word by sharing it with your friends and family. You can connect with me online. My details are in the show's description. See you again next week on the Shagulala Salami Show. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye.